Guys, the data for 13.3 has dropped, and I'm super excited to reveal to you guys our updated tier list for 13.3. Now, I'm sure you guys have all heard of HelloFresh, right? And that is today's video sponsor. So HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. Well, for a reason, right? It's the nuts. It's easy, customizable, and super affordable, and you can pre-portion and optimize your meals just the way you like them, and you can have them delivered right at your doorstep so you can just skirt along your floor in your gaming chair you don't even have to stand up it's also cheaper than grocery shopping and actually going outside and 25 percent cheaper than takeout so if you want to be on top of your game and get better at league well first of all you have to take care of yourself right your body your diet hello fresh ingredients travel from the farm to you in less than a week and they've got amazing absolutely delicious seasonal recipes that you can choose from so do yourself a solid and try hello fresh today go ahead and click our link down below to get a special limited discount and free shipping now we'll start guys by talking about the top lane tier list. So for Broken, for top lane, we have the same four champions from last patch. Darius, Fiora, Jax, and Jace. Because nothing has really affected these champions in 13.3, they will continue to be the powerhouses of the top lane. Now as far as S tier goes, what about champions who have actually moved up or moved down from this tier? Well, first of all, we have a new champion and some of you guys will be like, what the heck? Why is this champion in S tier? This being Aurelian Soul. Because of all the changes to Aurelian Soul, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but I'm sure you've seen clips, whether it's on like YouTube, YouTube or TikTok, this champion is absurdly broken. Now in the top lane, he's a little worse off because, well, the lane is longer, right? And because you don't really have like much mobility as Aurelian Soul, you can get caught out and potentially snowballed on, but you're just so innately strong that it doesn't even really matter. Once you start gathering your Stardust, stacks your abilities, especially your ultimate, they deal so much damage and that's why he has to be an S tier. And I'm sure you guys can let me know in the comment section just how broken you think he is. Now other champions who have moved up or moved down, well, Garrett has moved up into S tier, Alawi has also moved up because of the Black Cleaver Rush. Maokai is also in S tier as well. Lots of people don't actually know that Maokai top lane is actually just good now, especially since the Jack Show changes. Ryze has also moved his way up because, well, just like Aurelian Soul, I guess, he is just so innately strong at the moment. We also have Trindamir here because he's frothing the new Navori Quick Blades that proc off 40% crit. Then we have Udyr with Demonic Embrace and an Iron Max. And as far as champions who might have moved out of S tier, we have Zach who's gone down to A tier because of the nerfs to the champion. Honestly, he's still really good. I could have easily put him in S tier. And the other champion to mention here here, guys is of course Kale who got a passive buffed so the actual exalted bonus movement speed is going up and also your passes on hit damage from your Starfire Spellblade this is now scaling off more AP which means that your mid to late game scaling yes it's even better than it was before and this has actually increased her win rate a little bit and that's why she's gone from B tier to A tier and if you are a Kale main watching this or any main of the champions would mention let us know in the comments section how your champions feel in 13.3 and the other champion we really have to mention is Cassante here who has moved all the way down to the Dignitas tier the reason for this is because of the massive nerfs he copped. Whether it's to your stun duration and both your Q and your W, and to your ultimate, you're losing 85% of your bonus resistances. And think about that, especially when you have Jack Show proking. The champion is honestly just like dead. I'm being serious. He has like a 45, 46% win rate. That's in every single elo. So yes, I probably could put him in C tier, but I just want to prove a point to everyone watching that the champion is nowhere near as strong as he was. You can stop banning him and you should probably stop picking him as well. Apart from that, guys, like the tier list is pretty standard. You might want to think about like Radiant Virtue if you're playing a champion like Karma, for instance, because the cooldown is now 90 seconds. You're not going to be able to spam this as much, so she's probably worse off. And this might go for other champions as well, maybe like Sejuani top and yeah, Zach top, who we've mentioned. And as far as Loki broken champions go, we will make a video specifically for these champions, J4, Lee Sin, and Singe in the top lane. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you do not miss it. Now heading into the mid lane, guys, the other solo role. And in broken tier, we have kind of like just a completely new set of champions. Here. So we have Annie, Aurelian Soul, and then Rise. Now Rise, like I mentioned in the top lane, right? I'm sure we all know, right? This champion is actually just really good at the moment. So because of all the Rod of Ages and Seras buffs and the buffs to Rise himself as well, especially towards the end of the last season, right? And he's being picked and banned in pro play at the moment. The champion is really just defining the meta. But the other two champions next to him, Annie and Aurelian Soul, could contest him for that meta spot. Because for Annie, your E actually becoming like a legit ability now. Also, your passive, like when you start the game, you start with your stun available. And also, Tibbers is just way more tanky and pretty much unkillable. So Annie is so much stronger and in Platinum and above at the moment, she has like a 55, 56% win rate. And that is from thousands of games, not like 10 or 20 or 30. So that's when you know this is legit. And that's pretty much exactly the same for Aurelian Soul as well. Just like I mentioned for top lane guys, this champion has become a legit 
Injured Beast, those of you who have played TFT, right? It feels like this is the Aurelian Soul of TFT, where it just rains hell from the skies, and that's really once you start getting your Stardust stacks up. So Aurelian Soul is alongside Annie and Rise. Now, other champions worth mentioning? Well, in S tier, we still have Zac. The nerfs weren't significant enough, so the champion can still definitely be played in the mid lane, but we also have champions like Tristana and Vex who have gone down from Broken to S tier. The reason being is because, well, they haven't really fallen off at all. It's just that Annie, Aurelian, Soul, and Rise are 10 times better. Like, they are just clearly the strongest champions in the mid lane. So you can still play Tristana and Vex for sure, and that goes for everyone else in S tier as well. Now, other champions affected this patch, well, we have Cassinan, of course, who cop nerfs to his E, and of course, who is Ultima's damage and therefore is stacking in it. But to be honest, if you can still play Cassidy into a heavy magic damage composition, the champion is still really good. Like in high elo at the moment, he has well over a 51-52% win rate, and he's still classified as S plus there. Now in other elos, for sure, people are going to be blind picking Cassidy, and that's a really big mistake. So what you should be doing, guys, is picking him as a counter pick, and that's why I've put him in Loki Broken. He still serves a specific purpose in this game, and if you can find the right champ select to pick him in, he will be deadly still. Alongside him in Loki Broken, we have Kled Pantheon Rakan, and also Trinamir. And again, guys, I will elaborate on these in a future video. And as far as other champions getting changed, well, there really is only like one, and that is to LeBlanc. And for LeBlanc, your mana costs and your Q going down, also your mana just going up, the regeneration growth. This is for sure going to feel nice, also your ultimate's cooldown going down, but honestly, like, it doesn't really solve, like, I thought it may have, like, solved the wave clear problem for LeBlanc, because you just don't clear waves that well on this champion. You get outpushed by pretty much everything in the mid lane, and even if you do damage the enemy champion, because of the durability meta change from, like, last season in 12.10, which is still around, champions just have more magic resist, right? So you're actually damage is therefore cucked a lot and that is still the case for LB that's why she remains in B tier and there's kind of been like a little shift in terms of the meta here as well guys in this patch because you can see in S tier lots of melee champions and like quick bursty or assassins are in this tier and lots of mages like Ari, Cassiopeia, Syndra they've actually gone down from S tier into A tier Mages at the moment just are nowhere near as strong as these champions, unless you're probably going something like Seras and Rod of Ages, which is why Rise, which is why Anivia, they are still in S and Broken tier. Just make sure you guys are not playing Kale or Yumi in the mid lane. And the reason I mentioned Kale is because, well, because of those magic resist nerfs to her in recent seasons, she's just absolute trash to her in the mid lane. Like, if you're against a champion with any sort of magic damage, you are going to get blown up. You cannot play the laning phase. A lot better to play her in the top lane. Now, heading into the jungle, guys, there hasn't really been much of a shift as well in 13.3 but there has been a bit of a change in terms of the actual hierarchy of the top. So we have a Mumu going from A tier all the way up to Broken tier. We have Elise staying in Broken tier. We have Maokai staying in Broken tier. And then we have Udyr making his way up into Broken tier as well. Now, Mumu and Udyr are here for exactly the same reasons, right? Because of Jack Show. So by rushing a Demonic Embrace, then getting Jack Show. And remember, Jack Show now is empowering those champions who are building armor and magic resist. So after that item, you can build Force of Nature on Udyr. You can build Sunfire Ages on both of these champions. You can just build tank, right? Like you're not going to be building building any sort of damage after this, which is why it's super busted. And Amumu and Udyr, pretty much across every single rank, like even Amumu in high reloads, is an S plus tier champion, so that's why they have to be included here. And that's even with the nurse to Amumu. The Bandage Toss nurse is just completely redundant, like who cares, you're going to have blue buff, and you're going to have the mana regen from the jungle item. And also the E nerf, yes, early on you're going to be a little bit worse, but from rank 5 onwards, it's a buff. And because Amumu is such a good scaling champion, you pretty much become unkillable, especially if you're running something like Conqueror with Jack Show, very difficult to take down. Just remember, all of these champions, guys, in Broken Tier are AP. So if you have a lot of magic damage on your team already, be very careful about locking them in. Now, as far as S tier goes, very standard stuff. I shouldn't really need to explain much here. But as far as Loki Broken goes, you can see that we have a new inclusion here, this being Lee Sin. Lee Sin is here because of the buffs in 13.3. And again, in the future video, we'll really elaborate on this. Now, as far as A tier champions, we have J4 moving up because he got buffed and his W is now an actual ability and your base armor went up as well. This means your early game is even more powerful. So you should be able to snowball, providing you get a few kills and assists early on. And another champion alongside J4 and A tier who got buffed in this patch, this is Shadow Assassin Kane. So the fact that you're getting more damage from your passive and also your Q's damage is scaling more of your bonus attack damage, this is huge for Blue Kane. This makes your mid to late game even more powerful and his win rate as a result has gone up 2 or 3% and that's pretty much in every single elo. So that's why he's got to be an A tier. Now we also have Trundle right next to Shadow Assassin Kane and yeah, Trundle, okay, I guess your W's cooldown went down. You're still probably only using this like once per fight or once per camp, but it will help you out a little bit for sure and that's why trundle's win rate has actually gone up maybe like half a percent around that so that's why he's gone up into a tier he's also a really good champion at countering a lot of close range stuff because as trundle you're an amazing 1v1 especially against attack damage champions right because you reduce their attack damage with your q so think about that in your champ selects and that's about it guys for the jungle just make sure you're not picking kindra she has fallen off like a rock like legit has a 45 percent win rate because of the q base damage nerf and yeah don't play yumi 
All right, guys, now heading down to the ball lane here, mate. We've got a bit of Caitlyn, a bit of Jin, a bit of Samira, same as last patch, but we've got a new inclusion here in the broken tier, this being Zaya. Now, Zyra has really picked up speed. Well, well, it's really because of a couple of factors, right? The Buster Zyra's attack speed, and because you value attack speed, right? With Gale Force, Navoria, and all that stuff, like you are building it with Berserker's Grease. So this definitely means something. And also, we have to think about the Navoria Quick Blaze change, where you can get this as a second major item. It means that your basic abilities, the cooldowns are going to be much lower, and the ability haste also helps your ultimate as well, because your ultimate has like the longest cooldown in the game for AD carries, I swear. This has really made Zyra like a bit of a powerhouse at the moment, and she shot up all the way from like A to B tier to broken tier. Her win rates in like every single elo at the moment are above 52%. She's a hard like kind of core, I guess. S plus tier champion. So that's why she's alongside these other three beasts in the bot lane. Then we do have Draven who's dropped a tier down to S tier. Just because the four broken champions are just a little bit better. We have Ash here next to Draven. She's so versatile. Also good at flex picking, right? Because you might think she's going Ash support. And she does very well against lots of AD carries. She really doesn't like have many losing matchups. And then we have Zeri. But probably just make sure, guys, you're picking Zeri when you have like Lulu or a Yumi next to you, for instance instance, or maybe even like a zillion, something like this who can actually peel you. Now, as far as Loki Broken goes, we only have Misfortune here. And again, in a future video, guys, I'll explain on this. So again, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out. Now, as far as the rest of the tier list goes, it's honestly like kind of self-explanatory. Lucian has kind of dropped off a little bit. Well, quite a lot, actually. So unless you're actually playing like Lucian Nami, the champion is just nowhere near as good. And yeah, again, like compared to the broken champions, and that goes for every like A to C tier AD carry here, they just can't compete with the top tier at the moment. And as far as C tier goes, Aphelios, who's been here for so, so long now, we have Vayne as well, who has like 40% win rates in some elos, and Sivir, because, well, you just can't like keep up again, like in terms of DPS, in terms of damage with these other champions. You might see her like picked in pro play against Varus for instance because you cuck his ultimate and stuff but apart from that guys the champion is just really bad in solo queue just make sure again you're not picking Yumi now speaking about Yumi guys if you're playing support don't pick Yumi but also don't pick Caitlyn Callista Misfortune because of the Umbral Glaive nerfs they've made these champions even if they weren't already completely dog tier please do not pick them but you can see above them we have Jin here now Jin is here because you actually pick him like specifically to counter like Heimerdinger and stuff right and Jin does well for the most part because of his pushing power right now you are very susceptible to getting ganked I understand that so make sure guys you're putting your traps down you're putting wards down at the correct timers if you're against a j4 put one down at level one if you're against something like an evelyn put one down at around 233 minutes you just have to be aware of getting ganked because you should really like just have the push in every single matchup but yeah that's where you're going to lose lane and probably game but let's brighten up the mood a little bit and talk about the broken champions and i know you guys are like what in the heck how is annie here it's because you're starting with your stun like legit i'm being serious like annie starting with her stun is a big threat in the bot lane especially like an all-in so if you have someone like maybe a semi Mira next to you or a Draven, something like this, or or a Callista sounds really good. Actually, Callista sounds busted with Annie. Imagine that. Sending an Annie in at level six when she's got her stun and Tib is ready. Oh my goodness, FF. And then alongside Annie, we have Blitzcrank. This hasn't really changed that much. Blitzcrank is just, well, just one of the premier supports still. And we have Nautilus and Rakan. These two champions got buffed. So for Nautilus, you've got a bigger shield. Your mana cost and your W is also going down. And on top of this, your passive's damage, you're actually getting more bonus damage, or six in fact, based on level, and that's at each level, okay? So Nautilus is all in because of this is even better, and because you're all-ins cost less mana, and you can even just use your W now, because it's costing less mana, to soak up damage. So if you see an ability flying at you, it might be like a Lux E, or something like this, right, like a Zyra Q, and you know you're going to get hit by it, just pop your W, no worries. Then we have Rakan here as well, guys, because Rakan, well, just like these other champions, is classified as an S-plus tier champ, in pretty much like every single elo, and your Q's cooldown has gone down, the mana cost has gone down, and also the heal has gone up. This is really useful. It actually means like your Q is an ability, just like Annie's E now and J4's W, and also your W's magic damage is scaling off more AP, so if you're going something like Shirelia's Agile Mythic item, your W, well, it just enhances your one-shot potential, right? And Rakan is such a versatile support, I honestly think he's probably the best blind pick support, doesn't really have many counters, so yes, he is in broken tier as well. Now in S tier, Amumu, Ash is still here, yes, I know Umbral Glaive got nerfed, but the champion is still performing at an extremely high level, then we have Maokai, Morgana has moved up, because we have stuff like Blitzcrank, uh, Annie, Morgana does really well into exactly the same with Nautilus even Rakan Morg does really well and then we have Nami and then we have Pike who also got buffed so your ease damage is higher now as far as Loki Broken goes you see we have Set Shaco and Thresh are still here from last patch and then we have Tarek as well and again I will elaborate on Set and Tarek in a future upload apart from that guys the tier list is largely saying the same Alistair may have got a couple of buffs which is why he's actually gone up to A tier according to the stats he's a solid support now and Braum even though he got buffed is still staying in B tier because it's Braum you're picking this guy for a specific reason to pretty much like just peel your AD carry because the enemy team has a bunch of close range champions so you can actually get your passive off. Apart from that, he hasn't really improved. So yeah, those were the tier list guys for 13.3. Let me know in the comment section any questions, any thoughts you have and until our next Season 13 upload, this has been Iggs. Peace.